Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hike, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the and welcome back to the Baseball Hut 2. Hope you like this video and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to have a major update in this video about Shoei Otani. And on the translator, his former translator, it by Mitsuhara. Now, a couple things about these videos with uh, Otani. I give you information and I give you commentary. So we get a little bit of a mix of both, so you understand where I'm coming from. This is from Barstool Sports, which has sort of an opinion blog piece that they posted. And we have actually a couple of interesting tidbits in this, and a major one for Monday. Uh, headline, as Shoei Otani announces he will speak to reporters on Monday, we're now being led to believe his former translator, Ipe Misahara, is a massive liar who never attended UCA Riverside, nor worked for the Boston Red Sox. Boy, I tell you, they didn't know this before this. I mean, you didn't look into this guy's resume. I mean, you made such a big deal making sure he was getting all this money from the Dodgers, and you didn't let any and he put and he, he worked for the Angels. It wasn't like they just hired him. He worked for the Angels all those years, so they knew him. Now all of a sudden, well, he never worked for the Red Sox. It doesn't really matter if you graduate from college. It doesn't matter. You're probably better off if you didn't graduate from college. The way things are these days. The evolving show Otani translator gambling scandal continues to develop. The news developed. We're getting the narrative pushed on us that Otani's translator, translator Ipe Masahara, has a history of lying. Of course, he's a lying, degenerate gambler. As the Athletic has pointed out, it seems there's no record of Masahara ever graduating We've been attending UC Riverside, contrary to what the Angels media guide has said for years. Now, is it stunning in any way that the Angels don't run a proper background check, check on their employees? Of course not, but it does add another layer to the story. Also got a bit of a confusion, a bit of confusion on whether Ipe ever worked as a translator for Hik, Hideki Okajima uh, or the Red Sox. I would mention he worked for the he worked for the Angels all these years. Red Sox made it clear that they've never done anything with this guy. They want no part of this tomfoolery. They've got enough issues as there is with refusing to pay any players of value. Now, if we're being honest, none of them, none of them things above are worth getting all too excited about. Maybe it's just me. But I generally do not care at all if this translator went to college or not. I sure as hell don't care who he used to translate for. Those lies do not get confirmed, though. It does help paint a better picture of Ipe being a known liar, thus lending more credence to the story that he stole from Otani and was completely untrustworthy. Whether you, But he was trustworthy for six years. Whether you want to believe Otani's camp or is just, isn't pushing that narrative is up to you. But right now, they want us to believe Shoei is good and Ipe is bad. Of course they do. Because there's $700 million on the line here. If Otani bet on baseball, he's done. And all the money that his agent and all these people that, he, that are working for him are going to lose employment. So they have, a, they have a stake in this. This is a lot of money. The, the blog says, I'm still stuck on the fact that Otani's team changed their story right in front of our faces like we're stupid. A ref for show he told ESPN early last week that he knew about the debt. Ipe then gave that 90-minute interview to ESPN and supposedly gave the same account to the Dodgers team after their game on opening day. Then all of a sudden, Otani's lawyer stepped in and disavowed all that, claiming that Ipe stole the money and Otani had no idea about any of the gambling debt. It seems fairly clear that they got wind that admitting Shoei was paying off his buddy's gambling debts was very much not legal, hence audible. Remember that a crisis management spokesman for Otani initially gave this quote, ESPN on his behalf. Quote, yeah, I sent several large payments. That's the maximum amount I could send. Oh, boy. And we're just supposed to forget that happened? So Tani's team initially gave the same story to ESPN as it by dead, which the lawyers eventually shot down. Yet none of this holds water. They found out their original stance was no good and switched it up to save their asses. Well, guess who's back and ready to talk to the media? Well, yeah, on Monday, Otani said that he's going to talk to the, to the reporters on Monday. So that is, that is going to be something else. That's going to be crazy. Uh, 
couple of things. He did not talk to the media the other day after the second game in um, the second game in Korea, Korea, and you know it's a it's a very strange story. Let me use a couple of things. Uh, a couple of things that the writer mentions as uh, possibilities that will happen tomorrow. Otani's approached by reporters in passing tomorrow and simply gives them a friendly hello, thus satisfying them both way under them. Otani says he'd love to comment, but can't sense this is an ongoing federal investigation. Or he gives a bunch of PR mumbo-jumbo, much to our chagrin. That's what we're going to get. Three, Otani gives a heartfelt account of what happened. He has to be very careful, he says. Okay, he should not say anything. He should just say, there's a federal investigation going on with this situation. I don't want to talk about it. That's it. Otani gives a heartfelt heartfelt account of what happened, detailing the betrayal of his longtime best friend. He appears visibly shook and we're forced to believe him because how can anyone actually stay mad at him? I don't think anybody's mad at him. Okay, and then the final one, I guess, possibility is Shoei goes rogue. And fully missed his wrongdoings, going as far as him and he was the one who gambled on baseball. That'll never happen. Never happen. Um, in all likelihood, he'll say, I can't say much. Um, Pepe is, is a friend. He's got a problem. He will deflect it. Now, I would mention, Otani gives nothing of himself. He doesn't talk to the press. This was his reputation with the Dodgers. His reputation with the Dodgers and, and baseball players and athletes don't like it when you're the center of attention. Uh, when it comes to on the field and you, you produce a lot of good stuff and you produce negative stuff on the field and you don't stick around to, to talk to reporters and the reporters got to go to the teammates and ask, them, that, that is not a, that's a faux pas. Okay? This is not a situation where he didn't have to talk, he didn't have to, talk to the press. Okay? This is more about uh, annoying your teammates. Now, the situation in, in Los Angeles is different because he just got there. But just imagine, he just got there in Los Angeles, folks. And we've already seen this weird behavior. First of all, he comes out and does, uh, I guess, when he says that he's going to sign with the Dodgers, he brings out his pet. The media asks him, well, what's his name? And he will tell. That, to me, is bizarre behavior. Nobody knew that he got married. Nobody knew he got married to a very uh, public person in Japan. And she's a big Japanese basketball player. Nobody knew that. He's a very secretive guy. Did he gamble? I don't know. Okay. But his behavior has been very strange since he became a free agent. Okay. And we got sort of a glimpse of what's going on here. He's a very odd bird. And, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying that. I mean, you know, everybody's weird in their own way. But he is the, the most visible player in Major League Baseball. And you cannot have this guy not talking to the press on a regular basis. And, you can, and I would mention, I've been reading things now, that he can't speak English. He speaks English. He just doesn't want to talk to the press. So he talks in Japanese. He talks in his native language. But I've heard that he speaks English. Now... This interpreter, from what I understand, was born in California. He's not he's not born in Japan. He's born in California. So I would assume that over the last six years he's taught Otani how to speak English and understand English. There are some players that do not speak English on camera, and it doesn't matter if they're in, you know, they're Spanish speaking or Japanese speaking. Uh Ichiro Ichiro Suzuki, Ichiro does speak English and he understands it. But he never ever speaks on camera in English. Former Met, you want to assess this. He, talk, he speaks in English. He knows how to speak in English. He understands. But he never spoke in English on camera. So some players are shy like that. Now Francisco Alvarez was a young Met, young player. Uh, he just started talking to the media in English in the last year. And he's, what, 22 years old? That's great. To be able to converse with the native language that he's playing in. But, Otani doesn't do that. But the rumor is he speaks English. So, who knows? You know. 
but we know he's we know that he has a very strange or I know has a very strange reputation in baseball and that he doesn't like talking to the press and he le- he leaves the clubhouse right after the game's over. That's something that players do not like because it shows that they don't care. It's like a flip in this. It could explain why that team never won. He put up great performances, but they never won. Now, now his teammates in, in Anaheim uh, with the Angels, they're surprised by this whole story. I think they're just saying that for face value. I don't think they won't embarrass the guy. You know, when you're with the when you're with the player or with the guy for eight, nine months, you gotta know his habits. I don't think they want to talk about it. I don't think they want it's it's not good for the game for them to, to add the dirty laundry out for everybody to see it. So I think that's why they're all saying that they're surprised. I'm just taking a guess. Well, you let me know what you think about this video. Hit that subscribe button. Again, I'm gonna keep doing videos on Otani. It's funny when he when he's talking about videos about him getting moved, get traded. People went crazy. I talk about this, and that's so much. But it's important to know, you know, what's going on, what the deal is. So, thank you for watching this video. Have a good day. Subscribe. And I'll see you later.